This is the Stefan Hogan Podcast, and I am your host, Stefan Hogan. Thanks for being here today. Please hit like, subscribe, share, follow. I don't just say that. I say that because it really helps the show. My son's in the back seat. We're in the car. Let mommy sleep in today. And it made me think about something. I'm instilling in him the fact that I love music and I play guitar and he wants to be like dad probably because I wanted to be like my dad and that's how I learned to play. But he, I, I got him a little guitar and he carries the thing around the house constantly and he loves it. He's enamored with music. We go to the record store. In fact, we're on our way to the record store right now and we like to do that on the weekend and uh, get a record. <clears throat> and we'll go home and put it in the record player and We'll listen to it and he'll just bob up and down and dance and he absolutely loves it and he's enamored with music. So I ask myself, am I doing my son a disservice by potentially guiding him down the path to want to do music and fall in love with this thing? Where art meets commerce, right? I've talked about this before, but I haven't talked about it like I will today. I had a conversation with a former guitar student recently and this ties in with my little boy because he's growing up in this generation where the money is not in music like it once was. And the conversation with my student kind of went like this and and I want to let you in on the secret of that conversation and really give you kind of the nitty gritty details. He's been working at his craft for a long time. He's very talented. He is uh, sponsored by a couple of bigger uh, manufacturers. One of them is PRS for uh, guitars. He's a PRS artist, which says something about his playing. So he's really good. And he's thinking about going to college going to college for music and all these things that when you're younger you think about and you're trying to figure out the rest of your life and all of that and you may be listening to this and you are not a high school graduate that is trying to figure out what to do with the rest of your life nonetheless you might be in a music city like LA Austin Nashville New York and you're pursuing a career as either a player, a writer, maybe both, an artist, entertainer. It doesn't really matter because this applies to everybody. And I described to him what I'm gonna let you in on. So you start this thing because you love it. But then at some point you realize like, I wanna do this for a living. And then when you wanna do it for a living, you end up considering and or moving to a music city and once you move to a music city you soon realize it's very competitive one number two and this is what I want to get in on the money and the revenue and the business side too many artists just think about art they don't think about entrepreneurship and they don't think about business and they don't think about making money And it's so important to instill in yourself the understanding of not only the financial side, but the artist side. You need to add the financial side to the artist side because as a side man, if he was to move to Nashville and get a gig, he would probably initially be playing for someone, not making very much money and playing per gig. Now it'd be nice because he's young and he doesn't have kids in a family yet. But I have a son and I have a wife. And when she got pregnant and we found out and she gave birth to our son, she had to stay home. And I said, I want to be able to support you. Well, here's the details of being a sideman or being a musician on the road. You're gone a lot. The artist that you're playing for is going to have a peak, and when they're not doing good anymore, you're probably going to lose that gig. You might just get kicked off the gig because of a reason, or they found someone else that they like. There are so many reasons that you could lose your job, and it could happen like that. You can get a call from the team that represents the artist in their 
like, hey, we found someone else or we have to let you go, sorry. And then you're out of work. So then you're looking to find your next gig. So you're bouncing from gig to gig to gig. And if you get really lucky, you end up playing for an artist like uh, Toby Keith, who passed recently, who was such a huge figure in country music and impacted so many people and so many lives and did awesome things for our troops. Uh, his band pretty much was with him his entire career, you know, salaried. But uh, I knew someone that played for Toby Keith was in his band, and they still had to work a second job. And a lot of these guys that are playing for artists are working second jobs to be able to support living, because life is expensive. And when you're younger and you're graduating high school, you don't understand that life is expensive. You're not thinking about the wife, children, rent, and all of these things because you've been supported by your parents a lot of the time. So moving into the idea that you're not supported by anybody and that you have to fund your own existence is a really important kind of pivotal mind shift that you have to make. So let's talk about being an artist. If you want to be an artist and you move here, well, you're probably going to get a publishing deal first and the draws on publishing deals are not great. They're generally around twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year for starters. If you get a good legit publishing deal with one of the big publishing companies, or if you signed with Sony or Warner or something like that. And now publishing companies are predominantly signing artists to develop artists. They're going after artists that they can do. A lot of these publishing companies have uh, joint ventures with majors and they're the minor leagues for the majors so they're finding these artists they're grooming them they're getting the songs together they're putting them with great writers that have a lot of hits and then they're going to be pitching them to a major and then once you sign a record deal with a major that does not mean that you are going to have success in fact you're just getting a big loan you're going into debt but they have the connections to get you out there into the world and get you on the radio and all those things that are required to make you a household name to be the next Morgan Wallen because that's what, as an artist, if you want to share your art with the world, you want to be successful. You have those dreams of being on stage and selling out arenas. And that's awesome, and you should have that dream. But the reality is a lot of people get record deals and they get dropped or they get shelved. You can sign a record deal and never be heard of. You could sign a record deal and basically those big artists like the Morgan Wallen fund the artists that don't make it because they're going to try and they're gonna put out a single on you and put out content and they're gonna see how the market responds to you. And now the music business is data-driven. So we covered the player side. There's not a ton of money. You might be making 50, 60 grand a year. If you're lucky, a little more than that. But at the end of the day, is that really a viable career option for the rest of your life if you have kids and a family? So most of those guys are or girls, but predominantly dudes, are divorced or have kids, but aren't home. I mean, the lifestyle's a bummer if you really look into it. So, and then on the artist side, let's say that you have some hits. Well, the amount of money that it costs to get you to the point where you have success, you are going to be an in incredible debt to the record label. And the term is everything is recoupable, which means you're going to have to pay back what they gave you in the deal. So all the money that was spent on producers, travel, the band, the food, for people that are, like all this stuff, you're going to have to pay that back. So by the time that you pay everything back and you start making money, it's going to take quite a while. You know, like the three-year, $5 million dollar, investment that a record label is going to make on you to be a, a hit artist and then paying that back and if you think about streaming 
and the amount of money that's not made on streaming, you're not going to be making your money back from streams. It's going to be merchandise and touring. And if you don't have the success and the data doesn't favor you, then you are going to end up in a position where you're dropped from a record label. Luckily, that debt doesn't get carried with you. But in a way, you're kind of blacklisted once you lose your label deal. And that is kind of a... It wasn't always like that, but it is now. Just because the money's not in music like it once was. So, there's the playing side and then there's the artist side. And people say, can I just be a writer in Nashville? And the reality is, that's so hard now. I would say it's near impossible to just be a songwriter. If you have amazing songs and you're undeniably great, it's possible. But it is also very hard. I know a girl and she signed a publishing deal for $25,000 a year with Sony. And she's getting cuts, which means she's getting people writing her song or uh, cutting her songs, putting them on records. But these are artists that are not superstars and they're not singles and they're not on the radio. And the only way to really make good money is to have those songs that are singles that are on the radio that go platinum. And that is really the only way to make money as a songwriter is having hits and you're writing hundreds of songs before you may ever have that one hit I recently interviewed Topher Brown and he was talking about how he probably wrote three four hundred songs before John Party cut Night Shift and that was this fifth single off of that record and I believe that song has gone triple platinum now that was his first like big cut that really was kind of a a career altering moment for him but the amount of time and the years that he's been in Nashville 20 years the amount of time and effort that he's put in before that happened is pretty crazy so a lot of the money he made as a writer was off a sink so film television so those like that little bit of stuff adds up it's called mailbox money you know it pays back your draw But you're working two jobs as a player, you're working two jobs as a writer, and then as an artist, you're out on the road a lot, and then that's where the whole family dynamic comes in again. Are you willing to be gone? It's great when you're young, but are you willing to be gone for the majority of the year? And until you have the money to be able to bring your family along, unless you're which you could do if you're the artist. If you're a player, you can't. You have the luxury of bringing your family if you're the artist, but you start in a van with a U-Haul trailer. You know, it's, a, it's like that kind of a thing. And you work your way up and you might be on a tour bus with, and you can bring your family. But all of that is predicated on your success as an artist. All of these music cities care about money. They care about ticket sales. They care about how many people you can draw. They care about how, you, how well your songs do on playlists on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, all the digital service providers. And they care about your social media numbers and the data and the data and the data and the data. And that's really what it's gonna come down to for your success. And if you don't have that uh, success in the data, and you don't have the streams and the plays and they put out a song and it doesn't really do that well, you're not getting a lot of second chances like the old days where, you know, you could put out a few records and they could flop and then you had the one that hit that changed your entire career. Like the, you know, that would happen back then. Even with Vince Gill, who I had on the, the podcast, he was putting out records that were flopping and he finally put out one that did well. And it took a long time. You don't have the luxury to do that anymore. The music business is not like that anymore. So, you need to think about these things. You need to think about the financial side. You need to think about longevity and what it's gonna look like. My suggestion is if you're gonna go to college, don't study music, study uh, 
something like accounting economics so you understand how money works. And then try to build and be an entrepreneur, build your career like it is a business and maybe even build a business that can help fund your lifestyle so you can do the thing that you love. So have something that makes money. Say your career is music, your career is being an artist, a writer, a player, but your job is, I own a business and do X, Y, or Z. That way you have a safety net financially, but you're still chasing the thing that you love. But your 20s could be a great time to build a business. And now there's more than ever uh, entrepreneurs out there that have done it that are great people to listen to, like Gary V. Or you know he's impacting a lot of younger people. There's a, um, a lot of podcasters that are impacting younger people. I think that is really the strategy now. So this this is what I t- and that's kind of what I told my guy on the phone, you know. And I think that that applies to everybody hope that you got value out of this me talking but when I look at my son and I think about his future I want him to do well and I want him to be successful and the middle class is disappearing and money is a very important component to life and you don't think about it when you're young but if you want to be successful in the music business you have to have money coming in and labels all they care about is money and if you're not making them money you're done please like subscribe share follow if you enjoyed this leave a review if you have questions that i didn't cover go ahead and drop them in the comments i'll be sure that i personally hit you back